We head down the presidential highway from Clinton to Gore, with our final destination of this leg being Invercargill. Famous for Mayor Tim Shabolt, its proximity to Bluff, home of the world's greatest oysters and of course, its beer and brewing. We head in to see Steve Nally at Invercargill Brewery. Not only responsible for their own great beers, they also contract brew some of New Zealand's greatest. Let's check it out. Come and have a look around eh? Yeah, so. that sounds cool. We're in the process of moving. So everything we build or bring in now is all based around 2,500 litres. Because okay. that's the next batch size we go to. Sure. Yeah. So, so, that, so the, the brew kit, you'll get some new brew kit in to, to do uh, that? Or yeah, 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 basically. Mash tun kettle, get a new one. Of, yeah. So yeah, pretty basic kind of. Less stuff to break down when it's, when it's uh, like this. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you get, I've just gone from uh, from something like this then to a fully automated one that, oh, we, okay. that we did, and uh, yeah, well, way more stuff can go wrong. Yeah. And you can't open and close the, the valve by yourself, and you've got to you know rely on a, a computer to do it, and yeah. PLC, and yeah, yeah, yeah. This is easier. <laughs> you might say it's simple, but Steve's brews anything but. He pushes out some of the greatest craft beers around using a diverse range of ingredients. We chat to brewer Murray Cleghorn about this. So who actually does that? Someone... So it just shipped down from, from Tarkaka. So someone, someone goes to the airport of... It's a pretty, it's a good, pretty amazing aroma, right? Have you guys found there's a lot of difference between... Um, I mean, you know, obviously a lot of people talk to say yeah, between winter growth and summer growth, you get a lot of changes. Yeah, yeah. Totally different aromas yeah, yeah. coming off of it. But I mean, that, this place just fills up yeah, with yeah, yeah. the gingery... Oh, yeah, right. I was like you saying, that rose water sort of character. Yeah. We tried the... Um, we went to Logan Brown in Wellington, and uh, and they said, oh, you've got to try this. This beer and food match is amazing. And we had the Captain Cooker with... Yeah, there, that dessert with the rhubarb on the side and this rose water, a little bit of Turkish delight, and oh, unbelievable. And, and you know, we were talking to them there and they're saying, yeah, a lot of customers will give it a go. And we tried the, the epic Port Amarillo with, um, with a, a pan fried snapper with like green bean sambal and some bit of dal and some onion bhajis, and just perfect. They, you know, the, the guys know what they're doing, which is all, so good to see. It's good. Kelly, you want a beer? Right. We'll wander down to the bottle store to save us me walking very far. We've built up a thirst and keen to try the range. From real fruit to honey to different strains of yeast, it's time to check out the flavours. So it's honey and not honey dew? No, it's honey. The first one actually using honey. Everyone in the crush it seemed to be using honey dew, didn't mm. they? <laughs> Yeah. Maybe there's a supply there that's just frantic to get rid of the stuff. Yeah. Well, honey juice is quite expensive, eh? Yeah, that's what I would have thought. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, the honey works. It's got to have a dry finish. Yeah, yeah. And that's what it was all about. It's so. got a dry finish. It's a yeah. perfect combo. Yeah. I can see that's been pretty uh, yeah, universally liked, really, in, in terms of the, the yeah. style. It's yeah. great. Very approachable for mm. all. Yeah. Steve's hugely passionate about cider using real fruit in the process. He gives us a sample to help cleanse our palates. Make it to seven percent. Add a wee bit of sugar to it, just to bring up the OG. Uh, it ferments right out to zero, mm -hmm. and then um, we. That's what you're drinking there is about. It's probably about eighteen months old because we we store it. So what you you make a batch every year? We we didn't make any last year, so yeah. there was no need to. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. With such a great knowledge of fruit and brewing. It makes complete sense that Invercargill also do a fruit beer. We have a taste of their award-winning boysenberry. Yeah, I've tried a few fruit beers over the years. And you just can never get that intensity of fruit. Mm -hmm. And um, we are doing some work for some people. And uh, they were buying these concentrates and mixing them with honey. And um, I tried some, I tried, they had boysenberry, I tried that and I was just, what the? That's amazing. And, um, so do you have the juice post-fermentation? Um, right at the end of the fermentation. Okay. So, so we do an initial ferment of a wheat beer. I use Belgian wit yeast. Yep. 
weeks and, um, and then once it's pretty much over we chuck the boys and breeze syrup in to start her up again yep. and then it finishes off and that's it. The boys yeah. and breeze to me are a real Kiwi thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah absolutely. You know so it just seemed to work. Wasn't, Wasn't it bred in New Zealand? Yeah. In like no, was the boys and berry? The boys and berry <coughs> fruit was um, developed at Knott's Berry Farm in America, in California. Oh, I've been there. Yeah, <laughs> and it's it's the berry farm, and that's yeah. where they developed it. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. Everyone thinks it's a bit of a girl beer, but when I tell them it's six and a half percent, you just tell them to harden up a bit. <laughs> cool. <So>. cool. <laughs> It's actually my favourite. I, I think it's because you know I'm a cider head. Yeah. <coughs> I, just really, I love fruit, so nice. yeah, that's awesome. Nice. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, it, it just tastes like fun. Yeah, yeah it does. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh no! <laughs> the last beer we taste is the Beeman Pilsner. This was brewed with Indian cuisine in mind, using some interesting techniques. Started doing um, a lot more first wort hopping. First wort okay. hopping. I mean, you're the first brewer we've we've talked to about first wort hopping. Oh, nice. Good idea for a collaboration brew. We're thinking of. We can have a play with that, depending on what sort of beer we end mm. up doing and end up chatting about and deciding on. Yep. Maybe maybe first wort hopping is the key. If we make some noise, then hopefully you know some people will hear it, and uh, and it'll be good for all of us. Nice. And that's the plan. Yeah. Yeah.